Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Metropolis Radio. And recently, Catherine Pope, the president of Sony TV Studios, gave an interview with Deadline Hollywood. During that interview, the topic of TV shows taking anywhere from 18 to 18 months to two years to release a new season came up. Here is what she said in that interview. Question, what do you consider your biggest challenges? Quote, the thing I've tasked myself and the teams with this year is examining the time. Somebody was calling it slippage. The way in which these shows can be as much as two years in between seasons. They can take 16 months to two years for the entire production cycle for a season. And we're talking about eight to ten episodes. These shows are big. Some of them are giant. They might as well be blockbuster movies every episode. But at the same time, it's not great for the fans to have that big period of time in between. It's awkward because the platforms have to remark at a show two years after the previous season came out and it's not great for us as producers to have these shows that we can't repeat in any kind of compressed timeline i don't think it's good for creators either because they end up spending so much time on each season it's all about making sure that we're protecting the show and for the creator it's their time and effort and their ability to tell the stories over multiple seasons which is the art and the beauty of tv it's a novelization of the characters of stories when we lose that we start to lose a key foundational part of our medium so that's something we are focused on trying to bring a little more production and timeline hustle to the whole process just to make sure that these shows get to the fans as quickly as they can end quote this got me to thinking about some reasons why tv shows with shorter seasons and why she and when i say shorter seasons i'm referring to tv shows that produce seasons of only eight to ten episodes Uh, need to come out more frequently. I can sit here and come up with many, many reasons, but for the sake of time, I have come up with three major reasons for, for for why TV shows with shorter seasons need to be coming out more frequently. So let's dive right into those. The debate for a long time is whether or not binge-watching culture was good or bad. Should every episode of a show drop all at once, or should it be released weekly? The core of this debate is if the show is dropped all at once, it only gets talked about for a week and everyone moves on. The problem with a lot of these modern shows is that they're taking 18 months to 2 years to come out with a new season. It doesn't matter if every episode of a show is dropped at once or weekly, the outcome is the same. All roads lead to Rome. People are going to stop talking about the show because the gap between seasons is so large. What this prevents is fans creating fan blogs, podcasts, or fanzines of these shows that could keep them relevant. I would argue that the show Lost was only popular because of all the fan podcasts that were coming out at the time. Every week, there would be a new episode to discuss where the show was heading, etc. And then, once the season ended, all people had to do was wait out the summer for the next season to drop. So this, is, so this is when the fan theories would come into play. What's going to happen in seasons two, three, four, five, etc.? We can debate whether or not fan theories are beneficial to a short movie, but that's another topic for another time in the words of Maz Kanata. If these shows are going to take 18 to 24 months to come out, you can only theorize for so long before you get bored and just end up watching something else. I argue this is why the Orville never became the new Star Trek. The wait between seasons one and two was a little over a year, which I would argue isn't that bad in the grand scheme of things, but the third season of the Orville wouldn't come out until 2022, almost three years after season two had finished on Fox, and it would release only on Hulu and not broadcast. Personally, I think that season three was really good, but where were the people talking about the Orville? Season 3 dropped their episodes weekly, but it seemed that no one was really talking about it. Why? Because the wait between seasons was so long. Compare that to Star Trek on Paramount+. Plus. Star Trek Discovery is going into its fifth season. Star Trek Lower Decks is going into its fourth season, as well as having a crossover with Strange New Worlds, which itself is going into a second season. Even though these Star Trek shows on Paramount Plus aren't getting traditional seasons of 22 to 24 episodes, there is so much releasing that Star Trek fans don't have a shortage of things to talk about right now when it comes to new Star Trek. The same cannot be said for The Orville or Cobra Kai or Stranger Things or The Mandalorian. Honestly, the list just goes on and on. This is something that is impossible to get around without the de-aging technology that is being used in big budget movies. The problem is, we're talking about TV shows and not movies. Movies tend to have bigger budgets than a full season of a TV show, with some exceptions of course, 
Anyways, two shows that I can think of off the top of my head that are experiencing this problem is Cobra Kai and Stranger Things. The actors that were cast to play middle school students in Stranger Things are now either approaching their 20s or in their early to mid 20s. Likewise, the actors cast to play high school students in Cobra Kai are all approaching their late 20s, some almost being 30. It's very noticeable when a 30-year-old is playing a high school is playing a high school student. I mean, go watch Karate Kid Part 3 or the Jonas Brothers sitcom that was on the Disney Channel Jonas. Same with a 20-year-old playing a middle school student. How shows used to avoid this problem was either they would only have three or four seasons, so by the time the actors started showing their age, late 20s playing a high school student, the show had ended. So it wasn't an issue. Or, in the case of that 70s show in Beverly Hills 90210, the characters got out of the high school. They either explored the college years, or working at, or working at a surf shop, or whatever they did. It doesn't matter. This, this would also introduce new dynamics into the show, now that they aren't bound to the setting of a show in a middle or high school. But, if your show is going to be serialized, where every episode is going to build off the previous, and you're going to take 18 to 24 months to release a new season, then by season 5 of a show set in a high school, it's getting difficult to hide the actors' age. Even James Cameron brought this up when people asked him why he filmed Avatar 2, 3, and the first act of 4 back to back to back to back. He said that he didn't want the child actors aging between sequels and you're running into a Stranger Things issue where you have 20-year-olds playing 13-year-olds. For this one, I want to circle back to one part of the quote in the introduction of this video. Quote, it's awkward because the platforms have to remarket a show two years after the previous season came out, and it's not great for us producers to have these shows that we can't repeat in any kind of compressed timeline. I don't think it's good for creators either because they end up spending so much time on each season. That to end quote. That to me says that it's bad for creators to spend too much time on a show because if that happens, then the rougher edges that could help a show stand up from the crowd get smoothed out. There's nothing wrong with smoothing out some of the edges in a TV show. A show like The Walking Dead should have done that. But most people who like the but most people who liked The Walking Dead would tell you that the only good episodes were the season premiere, the mid-season finale, the episode after the mid-season finale, and the season finale. Everything else is just mediocre to crap. Let's circle back before getting too off track. Let's look at the sitcom community, often regarded as one of the best sitcoms ever made. What are the episodes that everyone fawns over? The paintball episodes, Dungeons and Dragons, the Pillow Fort episode, the Pillow Fort versus Blanket Fort episodes in season three, Remedial Chaos Theory, where six different timelines were created based on which character based on which character left Troy and Abed's apartment to get the pizza. Right? Some of these episodes helped define the show as one of the best sitcoms ever made because it was so creative. But imagine if Community were forced to only make ten episodes a season. Would the paintball episodes even get made? What about Dungeons and Dragons? What about Remedial Chaos Theory? What about the Blanket, Blanket Fort vs. Pillow Fort episodes? This is what bothers me about modern TV shows. It's the lack of filler. As I brought up, sometimes these episodes that would normally be written off as quote-unquote filler could be considered some of the best episodes of the show. What these shorter seasons do is it puts pressure on the showrunners to deliver on every single episode because in an 8-10 to 10 episode season, there isn't any time for filler. Plot must come first, characters must come second. So, when people go back and rewatch these shows or quote-unquote binge them, there isn't a lot of substance there. Everything is surface level because of these shortened seasons. That's why there will never be a modern equivalent of The Office, Seinfeld, That 70s Show, The Simpsons, Family Guy, etc. You force the showrunner to cut out the filler, and then you realize that all of the charm of the show has been removed. TV is not always about efficiency. Not every show needs to be the next Game of Thrones. That is why I firmly believe that these shows with 10 episode seasons need to come out quicker, akin to every six months, just to keep the fans interested, to get around the Asian cast problem, and so that there could be enough episodes to allow for some filler. Not all filler is bad filler. The shows that people are binging, The Office, Friends, Simpsons, Family Guy, all have some meat on the bone. These modern TV shows are nothing but skin and bone by comparison.